Good day, Mid Lakes. I'm Todd Clausen, Public Relations uh, Coordinator for the Phelps Clifton Springs Central School District, and I'm back with Superintendent Matt Sickles today. We're here with an important update on the district's continued response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we're specifically going to talk about the state's cluster action initiative and what it means for the Mid Lakes school community. Yellow, orange, and red cluster zones are a way for the state to identify and quickly respond to areas where COVID-19 infections are spiking. I want to be clear as we talk about this today, uh, Mid Lakes is not currently in an active zone. The state has not declared one for Mid Lakes. Um, so Matt, why then are we talking about it today? <laughs> We're talking about it today so that we can be prepared. Um, we're hoping um, that this region is not declared a yellow zone, but we want to be ready in case it is. Um, if that does happen, as we'll get into, um, schools who are in the yellow zone will have to test a certain percentage of their population, and they have two weeks from the designation to do that. And we want to make sure that we have as many of those days to work with as possible because we could, if that were to happen, we could have to test as many as 350 people. And we want as many days to be able to do that as we possibly can. And since there would have to be parent permission and some other things involved, we're just trying to get a head start, hoping that we never have to use um, the, the steps that we're taking right now. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, the, the, having some students on campus a couple of days, a week, you know, different days during the week also probably complicates um, everything. So you're talking a little bit about uh, the testing um, and, you know, from my understanding, the tests will be free and, and they're, they're pretty, pretty easy. And we'll talk a little bit about um, how, you know, getting tested, because I understand you have some firsthand uh, experience from it. I do. But uh, tell us a little bit about, um, there's this 20% testing requirement. Uh, what, what does that mean and, and what, what exactly is that requirement? Again. So when the governor and the Department of Health first started the microcluster initiative, the original guidance was that school districts in a yellow zone would have a week to test 20% of their in-person students, teachers, and staff. That got changed about a week ago. Um, so districts in a yellow zone would now have two weeks to get that testing done, which is a huge improvement. Um, but it would be 20% of our in-person students, um, teachers, and staff. So students who had, whose families had chosen 100% remote would be deducted from the number, um, and we would calculate 20%. Um, and if we are, so we're gonna collect permission and we're gonna get everything set up. And then once we have that total number, if we are designated to test, then we would do a random 20% sampling um, for testing. Hopefully, you know, we, we test our 20% in that two week time frame. If our positivity rate comes in lower than the rest of the yellow zones positivity rate for a seven day rolling average, then we're done. We can test once and not have to test again and stay open for in-person instruction. And that's our goal. And that's what other districts who have experienced this, um, th those are the sorts of results that they've had to date. Yeah, it, 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 uh, s some of the districts, uh, you know, kind of to our neighbors a little further out have, have experienced this already. And, and it seems to uh, be going trending in a positive direction, kind of reinforcing the safety measures districts have been doing, like like mid lakes, uh, you know, social distance, hand washing, extra sanitation, um, all these deep cleaning, consistent Absolutely. cleaning have been working. Absolutely, the measures that schools are taking and have been required to take, they work. So if you look at districts that have had positive cases they've been positive cases that have stemmed from outside of the school through community spread. It's not spreading in schools because the schools are safe because of the protocols um, that we've put in place. Great. So we're confident that if we had to test, if that does happen, that we will come in very low. We'll have to test once, be done with it, and that our numbers will actually help pull down the countywide numbers as well. 
Okay. Now you, we, we talked about this twenty uh, percent testing kind of threshold. Um, what if uh, what happens if the district is unable to get consent from twenty percent of the population? So the way um, the guidelines currently read is that a district that is not able to test 20% of their in-person students, 20% of their in-person teachers, and 20% of their in-person staff would have to switch to remote instruction. So it's really important that we get the cooperation of all those groups and of our community to participate in this testing so that we can use the testing as an opportunity to show that our school is safe, that we're not, con we're not contributing to community spread, and that we can stay open for in-person instruction in the hybrid model. Okay, um, we'll, we'll get into the website a little bit more, but what I did want to put out is the midlakes.org slash um, COVID test, I got that URL right, got to make sure it's right, uh, COVID test webpage where families can go and they can find some of the information that we're talking about, um, along with other resources, a consent form that we'll get into uh, about the test and uh, in a video um, involving one of two of us on this on this right now. Uh, so, so Matt, <laughs> last week, um, <clears throat> Ontario County Public Health made a visit to campus. Uh, you, you met with them. Um, and gave you one of the rapid tests. Um, what was that like? It, it was really quick and easy, quite honestly. I didn't know quite what to expect. I had been reassured that it was not that long swab that you know tickles the brain, so to speak. Um, it's a short swab, and it's you know eight or ten quick circles around the inside of each nostril. It really tickled more than anything. Um, and it, it was really quick. And then a solution is applied to the swab. It goes into a sleeve, gets closed up. You wait 15 minutes and you have your results. Um, it's a you know, 98, almost 99% accurate test. It's using, um, being used statewide for surveillance purposes. Um, it's really reliable. And, and it, it was quick and I will assure everybody, painless. So it didn't touch your brain. It did not touch my brain. I did joke off camera that it, it would probably would have had to have been pretty long swab. Um, but no, it did not touch my brain. It, it really, it's just uh, very shallow in the nostril um, and not a big deal at all. And obviously your results came back? They came back negative. Okay, I wasn't sure <laughs> if you're gonna let everybody you know that one or not. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, um, so all right. Painless, easy test. Um, it, it's something that, uh, you know, after they swab, they kind of put it in a little little kit um, mm -hmm. and just kind of let it rest for, for those 15 minutes. And on the um, midlakes.org slash COVID test webpage, we're, we have a video of the whole process. Um, we didn't, not 15 minutes, but just as you as you watch getting swabbed and everything. Um, and, and just uh, some some other information regard, regarding that. So, um, if testing begins at Mid Lakes, you know, if we're declared in a yellow zone and if be, when it begins, um, besides having families go to our website, uh, fill out a consent form or request a, a print document form um, to hand in, what else um, what will happen? Uh, in terms of communication and informing the parents of, of this? Right, so once we get the results um, of the consent form, we're just gonna hold that information in a spreadsheet and hope that we never need it. Hope that this our district is not designated as a yellow zone and that we never need to use that permission. Um, but if it does happen and we're required to test, then we would take that data, that database, that spreadsheet, and we would do a random 20% sampling of each group. So we would identify the 20% of students who were picked at random um, for the testing, and then we would communicate with those families um, to let them know um, that their child had been selected and when that testing will occur and the circumstances. Um, and we're gonna provide um, a wide range of 
opportunities. We're going to do as much of the testing during the school day when, when students are on campus as possible, um, but we also understand um, that there may be some parents who would be more comfortable being present with their kids, that you know, they may be okay with their kids being tested, but they wanna be there with them. So we're also gonna work on some flexible scheduling options outside of the school day, outside of the work day as well. Sounds great. And uh, so parents will fill out the consent form, you know, uh, once, once they've given consent, let's say I have, um, you know, my son or daughter in school and they've been identified as receiving the test, will there be a, another communication or will the student just come in for a test at a designated time? Yeah, so the, the time will be communicated. Um, as far as the results go, at this point, you know, we still have some details to work out. We're working out the logistics of where and when and, and which staff members will be involved in that. So if we are designated as yellow zone, I'm sure that you and I will probably be doing another one of these videos, um, getting more information out with the details. But at this point, we, we absolutely will be communicating any positive test results because any person whose, tests, who, whose test comes back positive in that 15 minutes will be immediately isolated and then arrangements will be made for that person to be sent home and to follow up with their physician um, for a follow-up test. So the, all of the individuals will be kept in the testing site, socially distanced while they wait for the results of their test. If it's negative, they go back. No news is good news for the family at this point is what we anticipate, but any positive result will immediately be communicated so that a parent can come retrieve the child and follow up um, with a healthcare professional. Okay, and um, the other thing that we're doing too on the website and the consent form is using students' ID number, right? Right, we wanted to make the consent form as easy as possible for everybody um, and also contribute to a quick turnaround time so that we get the information, have it in case we need it. So we're going with an online form. Um, that being the case, in lieu of a signature, we wanted to use a, a unique identifier. So we're using the student's unique um, student ID number, which for grades 7 through 12, that's printed right on the report card. And the first quarter report card was recently mailed out. And for students in grades K through 6, first trimester report cards are going to be mailed out soon. And we're going to include in that mailing um, a separate sheet of paper that has the student ID number on it. So if parents, some parents know their, their student's ID number, some students know them themselves, but in case they don't, um, that report card mailing will have that information. And as always, they could call their school if perhaps Absolutely. they- Absolutely, you can always reach out to the school and if they prefer a paper form, um, one can be provided as well. Okay. What else about um, the rapid test, uh, the, the cluster zones or anything would you like parents to know about now? You know, I know that this, this whole COVID-19 pandemic has weighed heavily on all of us. It's gone on way too long. It's taken its toll in so many ways. And I know that the whole idea of testing, people have different feelings about that, and, and we certainly respect that. Um, but, but if we are designated as a yellow zone, we will be required to test. It's, it's test 20% or it's go to remote instruction, which we absolutely do not want. We believe our school is a safe place. Our health and safety protocols are working and we fought hard to get more students on campus. We have all of our dates designated to get all of our grades into the hybrid model. We wanna keep going that way. So we really need the participation of everybody. Um, you know, I've taken the test. I will get, you know, I will be participating again if I'm chosen at random out of that 20%. Um, we need the numbers. We need the cooperation so that we can demonstrate what we already know, that the school is safe, demonstrate those low numbers, stay open for in-person instruction, and help our larger area by pulling down that overall infection rate by, you know, contributing our low numbers. Great, great. Well, you know, um, 
we're, we're get, heading into the holiday season. Um, you know, and I just wanted to, as we wrap up here now, just want to encourage everybody who's listening to continue to do um, everything that you can to make yourself safe and your neighbors safe um, and your students. Um, everybody working together um, has led to New York State as a whole having one of the lowest infection rates in the country. You know, and that includes wearing masks, continuing to wash your hands, maintaining a safe distance, avoiding large ga uh, gatherings. Um, I know, you know, and I think the governor just recently mentioned, you know, this is, this is a time where we're the, usually the most social um, because it's the holidays and we plan all these meetings and gatherings. But um, if we continue to do what we can to stay safe, that's the best way to combat the, the pandemic. So um, with that, um, everybody stay safe, have a happy holidays, and uh, we'll be sure, you'll be sure to hear from us soon, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you all for your cooperation throughout this process. And as Todd said, this really is a community, community endeavor. And by working together, we can keep everybody safe and, and keep our, our school open for in-person instruction. So thank you, everybody, and have a happy Thanksgiving.